Hey everyone, welcome back to another random video tutorial using Autodesk Maya. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be rendering this um, Android right here. Um, I'm going to be showing you some of the steps and what tools that I use to get the result to render this Android. So let's get started. The first thing that I did is turn on my resolution gate, go to my render settings. I'm going to change to mental ray. I'm going to input the resolution here, the aspect ratio. So that's the resolution that I want, 893 times 1080. Render options, enable default lights. I'm gonna turn that off. Go to quality. Under preset, I'm gonna set it to production. With that done, close this. Select my Android. Create a new layer. Rename the layer to Android layer. I like to rename everything to keep things consistent. So I'm going to go to the hyper shade, this little icon, create a new blend. Give this Android some color. Switch from HSV to RGB. 0 to 255. I'm going to input some numbers, which is 103. One twenty-five and thirty-six. That gives you this nice little green color. The eccentricity I'm gonna lower down as well as the specular roll-off. Duplicate this bling, go to edit, duplicate, shading network. Give this bling a name. Call this like Android main color. Select this other bling and rename it. This is going to be the eye beam. Move the slider color um, from black to white. Select my Android. F to frame up. Deselect both of the eyes. Right click on the blend and assign material. Hold shift and reinvert the selection and assign material. So now that that's done, go to my channel box, select my camera, input some numbers on my camera. And that's the position that I want my Android. Next, click on this bookmark. Right click on the bookmark. Add it to the bookmark. Select it. Take this number one off. Give this a nice description. Hit 
hit apply and add to shelf. Now when I move my camera around, all I have to do is click on the little icon on the shelf and it's going to reposition the Android back to where I want it. So with that done, import an image. This image is already cropped down to 893 1080. The same input on the render settings. So I'm going to select it, hit open. You can see the image. Um, it doesn't match the resolution gate. Go to the attribute editor. With the camera selected, I'm going to scroll all the way down and where it says fit resolution gate, I'm going to hit it and it's going to match it up. Do a quick render. The Android is all black because there's no lights on it. So the next thing that I'm going to do, create a sphere. Scale this sphere to about 2000. Give this sphere a name, call it Dome. I like to rename basically everything. Go to the attribute editors, open render stats. Cast shadows, turn that off. Receive shadows, I'm gonna turn that off. Add this sphere to a layer. Go to my hyper shade and select a surface shader. And apply it to the dome. In the out color, input a file, go to my folder, select this background image 1920 by 1080. That's the original image that I found on the internet. Reference my Android and my DOM. Go to my four views, go to the top view. Create a directional light. Grab my move tool, turn on snap to grid. I'm gonna be moving this light about 10 or 11 units, whatever. Hey, insert on my keyboard to see the pivot point mode. Select this pivot point and put it at the center of the grid. Duplicate this light and rotate it to about 90 degrees. Duplicate it again and rotate it again. If I'm not mistaken, it's 180 degrees. Yes, it is. Duplicate it one more time and input negative 90 degree in the rotate Y. Go back to my perspective view.
select all of this light, duplicate them. And I'm going to rotate them in the X to around 40 degrees. Select this lights again, duplicate them, and rotate them negative 40 degrees to put them on the top. There you go. Select all of these lights, add it to a layer, call it a light layer. Hit my bookmark, make sure everything is fine, and do a quick render. I'm gonna hit the render button. You can see the image is all blown out. That's because of the light um hitting the same source at the same time. I want to try and position this guy on the middle because I'm gonna give all of this light um colors. I usually add the camera to a layer too, just in case it get on the way. Select this light, go to my attribute editor. I'm going to pick the color, color picker, and I'm going to start selecting parts of the image to give a color. For the top part um, of the light, choose the top colors with the color picker. As the top part, now the middle part. I already selected that one. It's this one right here.
So once that's done, I'm gonna hit my bookmark on the shelf, do a quick render and see what that does for us. You can see how much better it looks now. That's because all of the lights, they were originally white. So you gotta, you gotta do some tweaking on them and add some colors to all of the lights to get better results. Next, hit down on my keyboard with all of the lights selected to see the shape node. I go to Windows, General Editors, Attribute spreadsheet, go to all. I'm going to look for use ray trace shadow and turn on ray trace shadow. Hit one for on. Next, look for emit specular. And I'm going to turn that off. Zero is to turn it off. I'm going to look for shadow rays. And I'm going to bump it up to about seven. I'm going to look for light angles. I'm going to bump that up to about 15. Remember, I'm doing that to all of the lights at the same time. Let's see what this does for us. Save this image for comparison and re-render. You can see all of the shadows added to the Android. Next, I'll add the bottom lights. Press down once again on the keyboard, go to the attribute spreadsheet, and I'm going to lower the intensity on these four lights to about 0 0.5, half. There you go. Let's see what this does for us. And that's looking a little more natural. Next, I'm going to be creating another directional light. And this is going to be my sunlight. Scale it up. Rotate it towards the sun. Go to my channel box. Rename this to something like sunlight add it to my light layer and test it yep now that that's done i'm gonna go to the attribute editor and turn on ray trace Adder. Create a plane. 
This is going to be my ground plane. Scale it up to fit the whole image. Rename the ground plane something like floor. And create another layer called this floor layer. Let's re-render this. So that's all of the shadows hitting the ground plane. With the ground plane selected, go to the attribute editors, open render stacks, turn off cast shadows and visible in reflection. Re-render. You can see it added a little more light to the Android once I turned off the cast shadows and visible and reflection. But the shadows are still there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to Windows, Relationship Editor, Light Linking, Object Centric. I'm going to select the ground floor and deselect all of this light. Except um the sunlight that's why it's good to rename everything so just the sunlight is there and let's see what this does for us so you can see all of the shadows from the other lights disappear that's because only the sunlight is now hitting the ground plane so now i'm gonna add another shader to this floor is the use background shader. Selected and assign material to selection. You can see it turn green. Let's see what this does for us. Save this image for comparison. So you can see the use of background shader. Um, it worked. So you got to keep in mind to use the background shader. Um, the ground plane needs to be at the origin of the grid. You cannot move it up or down. It has to be at the origin. So keep that in mind. Um, in the image, you can see reflection on the bottom and this blue, this bluish color. Um, you don't want that obviously on the scene. So we're going to work on that next. With the ground floor selected, use background shader, specular color, lower that down, reflectivity, lower it down, reflection limit, lower it down, and the shadow mask. Um, the shadow mask is to make the shadows darker or lighter. So I'm just going to make it to about 8. And let's finally do a quick render. There you go. Everything is nice and clean. The bluish disappeared. The reflection disappeared. So the final thing that I'm going to do is go to my channel box, unreference the Android layer, select it, F to frame up, and I'm going to be sticking his feet through the ground plane to have the illusion that his um his feet are sank on the beach. So let's do one final render. And there you go. You can see his feet are sank in. So that's this video tutorial guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Once again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Have a good one.